Hello, my name is Jennifer. I work at a company called My Energy. We make little widgets that allow you to do stuff like charge your electric car, if you can afford one, uh, from your rooftop solar panels. We do stuff like heating your water, but it's the car charger that makes all the money. Um, so this is not a DevOps talk. I'd just like to start um, with that caveat in there. It did, but it did come up in a conversation in the pub after DevOps Days Birmingham, so it's kind of appropriate, where we were talking about the tendency of people to add blockchain as the solution to uh, every problem um, and obviously talking about like crypto and NFTs ruining uh, cat gifts ruining ruining the uh, the planet and whatever blockchain couldn't possibly be a solution to the energy crisis right I can't remember what slides coming up next um, that is my cat he's only got three lights oh yeah electricity let's talk about electricity and how electricity supply works in the UK so we have the national grid which was uh, one of the UK's greatest like civil engineering projects of all time um, and it allowed, before we had the national grid, which connects power stations to consumers via pylons and stuff, um, electricity was generated and supplied by individual power stations with no, like, consistency with frequency or whatever, so my light bulbs wouldn't work in your house, and it was, like, prohibitively, even more than now, expensive for normal people to use electricity in their home. Uh, so in the 20s, Stanley Baldwin, pr uh, Prime Minister, um, <laughs> came up with the uh, electricity bill, which proposed this... Um, system of control, one-way control from the electricity producers, the coal-fired power stations, to consumers, us in our houses. Um, and this has been like, they turned it on in the 30s, and it's basically been the same ever since, um, and it's worked fine up until about 10 or 15 years ago, when there was a bit of a change. Uh, obviously, there's been upgrades, different types of power stations, and more pylons, and, and whatever, but about in the last 10, 15 years, we've seen a huge um, uptake in stuff like rooftop solar, commercial wind farms, and battery storage, meaning there's no longer this one-way flow from power generators to people, which is fine, really. The grid is flexible enough to be able to handle this um, stuff, um, and it reduces, overall reduces our reliance on fossil fuels, so it's all good, it's all good stuff, really. But it's, so it's not a problem, but what it is is an opportunity to maybe change our relationship with the energy industry, okay? So here's my, here's my proposal. I've got solar panels on my house. I've also got this little electricity monitor that tells me how much I'm generating and how much I'm using. Um, a lot of tea in my house. Um, so imagine my neighbor across the road who doesn't have solar. What if I, instead of putting my surplus back into the grid, I could give it directly to him and he could run his tumble dryer for a cheap, cheaper price than running it off the grid. And my neighbor down the road who's got a battery, I could use some of their electricity to run my dishwasher overnight. And we could create like this little peer-to-peer -peer electricity sharing network down our, in our little bit of the road. We could create our own microgrid um, and remove our reliance on the national like, infrastructure, which is all great, but managing the transaction, the, the who's generated what and who's sold what is really difficult. And you know what would actually fit this brief is blockchain. Because realistically, <laughs> in its simplest form, blockchain, all it is is a transaction log, right? It's fancy, it's decentralized, immutable, blah, 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 but it's, it's accounting, right? So it could easily be used to track how much I've generated, how much I sold to you, how much I bought from you, and whatever. Um, so, yeah, great idea. I thought this was a brilliant idea. I mean, silly, but brilliant. So I went to Google, and do you know what? It's not silly. People are actually doing this, right? In real life, this is happening now. There's a place in, in New York, in Brooklyn. Uh, there's a project called the Brooklyn Microgrid, and it's exactly what I just described. Some people have solar panels on the roof of apartment buildings, and uh, they buy and sell energy credits um, using an app based on blockchain, um, and they can decide whether they want to buy their electricity from... Uh, the solar panels or if they want to buy it from the grid and you know what it works really really well it's been running since 2016 and the electricity bills are significantly lower it's so much cheaper to buy from your neighbor with solar than it is to buy from the grid it's unbelievable um but obviously they've got the backup of whatever new york's national grid is um but where it gets interesting and where is where people have been doing the same experiment in australia where there is no power infrastructure so they're completely independent of any national system right um which has an interesting, uh, so they have a lot of batteries, um, so, which has an interesting implication for other places that maybe don't have any infrastructure, like maybe different countries where they haven't, they haven't got the political ec or economic ability to build that kind of stuff. Maybe the future of energy is not these big scale projects, whatever, it's local, uh, decentralized microgrids, all based on renewables, um, which doesn't conflict at all with what Res are doing, because this space is super interesting, there's loads of stuff, on my blog, which I forgot to update before I came, so that was great. Um, <laughs> and I just, I know, I know I'm going over time, but literally on Wednesday, Octopus Energy had a conference about exactly this in the UK, and it's super exciting. <laughs>